Hello, my YouTube friends. Today, I'm gonna show you how to create this dynamic mask for your OBS live streams using nothing but free software. Then I'm gonna show you how to optimize it and add it to your live streams. It's really not that hard at all, so let's get to it. My goal on this channel is to help people become better live streamers and maybe entertain a little bit in the process. So take a second and let me know how I'm doing down in the comments below. And while you're there, leave a thumbs up. It really does go a long way towards helping YouTube share this video with a wider audience. My analytics also say that 80% of the folks that are watching my content are not subscribed. And if you're one of those 80%, please consider subscribing. It really does help me continue to create content that helps you and it's totally free. So thanks. We're gonna be creating the dynamic mask in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a free full featured editing software that is unbelievably powerful. There's a link in the description down below if you wanna download it and follow along. That is the best way to learn. Here in DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna go ahead and select new project and we're just gonna name our project and we'll call this one dynamic mask cloud and click create and then we're gonna go up into file we're gonna go to our project settings and we just want to make sure that it's set to the frame rate for our live stream whether it's 30 or 60 and then it's 1920 by 1080 or whatever your stream is then we're gonna go here into the edit page I'm gonna right click on the media pool and select new fusion composition and I'm just gonna change the time for my fusion composition I want this to be one minute so it's not looping all the time annoyingly and click create and you just want to make sure it has the same frame rate as your live stream as well now that we have that we're just going to click the fusion button go into fusion and you can see we have our media out we're going to move that over to the right and we're going to click anywhere so it's free and then we're going to just drag our background in here and connect it to our media out you can see it's a black background and i'm going to add a mask by clicking this button here and now we're going to go over here into the mask settings you want to make sure your mask is selected and the mask is the rectangle and i'm going to adjust the width and the height of my mask and this is going to be the area where your camera is going to be shown and then i'm just going to add a soft edge to this and you can make this as tall or as wide as you want it to be just keep in mind you're setting up your camera area right here so anywhere where the alpha is showing through obviously your image will be a little bit see-through so i like to fill that whole box in as black as possible and now we're going to go back into edit and we're going to right click and we're going to create a new fusion composition once again you really probably want to name these camera and clouds I didn't do that which makes it a little more difficult later but now we created it and now we just have to figure out which one since they're both named exactly the same and we'll drag this one down in here and hope that that is the new one and it says fusion composition one so it should be the new one whereas the other one is just fusion composition and we're gonna click on open fusion composition we're gonna move that out here and we're gonna drag this fast noise in here we're gonna connect it to our media out now we're gonna play around with our fast noise to get the look we want we want more detail we want a little bit more contrast maybe a little bit of brightness and we're gonna change this color uh, so color one is gonna be set to green because we're gonna key this out using the green screen and we're gonna click OK and the second color is gonna be black and there we go now we're gonna go back in to our name and we're gonna go ahead and scale this up a little bit so it looks kind of like what you see there. Now the seethe rate adjusts how this animates. So if I adjust the seethe rate higher, it'll animate faster. If I adjust the seethe rate down, it'll animate slower. And this is all a matter of what your personal taste is. It's really up to you as to how fast you want your cloud animation to move. Next, I'm gonna add a background in here because we want a standard background of green around the edges of the screen so that it really fades out to a standard green screen. We don't want sharp edges around the edge of our mask. So I'm gonna drag a background in here and I'm gonna go ahead and change the color. We're gonna choose that green color again. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy the color we used on the fast noise and I'm just gonna paste it onto the background. And that makes sure that it's the same color. Then I'm gonna take the fast noise and I'm gonna drag it over top of our background. And then I'm just gonna drag this to media out. And there we go, you can see it turns a little darker green Green. So all the areas of alpha are kind of showing through and I'm gonna select fast noise and I'm gonna go ahead and select the mask. So now we have a mask there We have a nice green border and all that stuff So now we just want to adjust this mask and we're gonna make it wider and taller And this needs to be a little bit wider and taller than the box We already created for our camera 
And this is gonna create that cloud effect on the edges of our camera. We're gonna add in a really soft edge and we're gonna add in some border width and then we're gonna adjust these widths down quite a bit. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we have a pretty solid green border around the edges. We do wanna have a nice transition without a sharp edge. So that's looking pretty cool right there. We have plenty of green around the edge. That looks kinda nice, I like that. And if we click play, you can see what this looks like. So now you're gonna have this animated cloud around the edge of our camera, which is gonna be in the front and center. That looks pretty good. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click on it. And then I'm gonna just drag our camera box up above our cloud box. And there you go. Now you can see the effect that we're gonna get. Our camera's gonna be in that black area and the clouds move around on the edges through the alpha, which gives us that really cool cloud effect. It looks absolutely fantastic. All that's left is for us to export this. So what we're gonna do so we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click the rocket ship and we're gonna name our file and then we're gonna click browse and we're gonna go to the location where we want our file to be click save and now we can go ahead and select mp4 for our type and our codec is h264 just make sure your resolution and your frame rate are correct and then we're gonna click add to render queue once it's finished rendering we're gonna go ahead and use shutter encoder there is a link in the description down below so you can download it this is going to make our files smaller and easier for OBS to handle. So we just drag our mask out in here, our MP4, and we're gonna select VP9 as our function. And then all we need to do is select start function and it's just going to recreate this file as a WebM, which is much smaller and easier for OBS to use. You can see it is about half the size of the regular cloud mask. So now here we are in OBS, we're gonna create a new scene and we'll call this scene mask and click okay. And we're gonna click the plus under sources and we're going to go and add a media source and we can name this cloud mask and click OK. And we're just gonna load that video file up. You just wanna make sure that you select the WebM that we created because it is a much smaller file. We click open and then we click loop and there we go. So now we have our cloud mask in there. It looks pretty awesome. We can go back into our scene and we just right click on our camera and go to filters. Then we're gonna click the plus under effect filters and we're gonna select dynamic mask. We're gonna drop down our input source and we're gonna select our mask. And then we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom under alpha channel and we're gonna select the green and we're gonna put minus one in there. And there we go. So now we have our mask loaded in and you can see it. And let's make it a little bit easier to see what our edges look like. We're gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go ahead and just add a color source and we'll just add a standard color source and we're gonna move it below our camera and there we go. So now you can see, but I don't like how the edges have that sharp piece. I really want those to fade out. And the easy way to accomplish this is to just bump up our numbers. So we're gonna go into filters. We're gonna select dynamic mask and we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom again and we're gonna go to that green input value and we're gonna go to two. And if we go to two, you can see it really crops this up. So we have a really nice feathered edge, but it doesn't have to be quite that cropped. We're gonna go back into filters and we're gonna select dynamic mask and we'll go down here and we're just gonna try, instead of two, we're gonna put minus 1.5. And I think that gives us a happy medium. It crops out that really sharp edge, but it also gives us a little bit more of a dynamic change on the outside. And I like how that looks and you can mess around you can go from minus one to minus 1.1 or minus 1.2 and see what works best for you now we can stretch this up make it look however we want and I'm just gonna go ahead and create a scene with this so we'll add a media source we'll just add a video in here and there we go and then I can just click the plus and I can add in that scene that we already created with our dynamic mask and I can shrink this up and that looks pretty good, but we don't need the white background. I'm gonna go back into that scene and just hide the white background and there we go. Now we have a really cool cloud type moving mask that has great animation. And the best part is this is really not very distracting. It's really pretty subtle, pretty awesome. If you wanna learn about other types of masks for OBS, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTube subscribe to the channel my name is Michael fire jr. thank you so much for watching have a great day and I'll see you in the next one